Welcome back to World with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. Here, no one is worthless, no story is worthless, and we're talking about the Hollywood hustle, myth versus reality. And I have a very, very special guest today on my show. Let me give you a few words about my guest. Noble, creative, determined, and most importantly, wife. My wife, Miss Shandria Brown. Welcome yeah. to the show. Thanks for having me. Welcome, baby. <laughs> it's an honor to be on your show. Well, thank proud. you, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. And I mean, honestly, as I said before, this is about Hollywood hustle, myth versus reality. Um, I know you've been out in LA longer than I have. Um, I've been out here for almost two years. You've been out here for almost six. Right. So you know a lot more to Hollywood than I would ever know. So let's just get right into it. All right. All right. So my first question for you is, where are you from? I'm from where you're from. Um, the amazing city, Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Born and raised. Um, my entire family is still there. And awesome place where I met you, what, seven years ago. All right. Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Mm -hmm. All right. So growing up in Chicago, um, did you ever idolize any women of color in TV or film? You know what? I always um, was inspired by Oprah. And I know so many young girls, so many women are inspired by Oprah, but I loved how multifaceted Oprah was. You know, um, I know I ended up becoming a television talk show host. Um, I love that she created. I love that she wasn't like just a talk show host, you know. I love that she had a heart of studios right in our city, right in down, you know, right in downtown Chicago, where she was creating television and, and film projects. I love that she acted. Remember, she was in the Women of Brewster Place, and yeah, she, she was, was a part of the Color Purple, and then she started like creating her own film and TV projects. Mm -hmm. so did, All right. So, being that Oprah is one of your inspirations, and eventually you got into media and, and to being a talk show host, what are or what were some of your earliest moments in media? You know what? Um, I, I attended Columbia College, downtown Chicago. Mm -hmm. I studied TV production directing. My degree is in television. My concentration was product, production directing. Um, and then before that, I was in the High School Summer Institute, um, which is a program that Columbia has in my senior year in high school. And so I went through that program where I took my, my first TV production class. But like, you know, in our family, I, I really give like, respect to my dad because like you know my dad works in media and my dad also we also always have like video cameras and cameras and things like that in the house so like i was I, I was able to be free you know like i was the one when we had the family functions i was the one holding the camera saying like hey say hi mm -hmm. say a message you know like do this i was the one taking the picture so i just feel like although i don't think that i really identify what i was that i was like in my pathway, I think that I think that it was always a part of me. I can remember being like 11 or 12 years old, pretending to be a radio DJ. Mm -hmm. You know, and this, you know, GCI was like was and still is the number one radio station. Um, I would record my voice, and I would be like, "Hey, hey, you're listening to WCFS on the radio. This next song I'm about to play is Crisscross Jump." You know, and I would, then I would play. So I was like making dubs. But I mean, I really attribute that to my parents because I had like, although I was playing, I kind of had the tools to kind of ignite the creativity in me. So early on as a child, definitely playing around, but then I went to school um, in, in the arts, so. Okay, all right. So you're from Chicago. Um, you went to school for media and school for the arts, of, you know, pretty much as well. Um, you could have stayed in Chicago, mm -hmm. launched a TV show. You could have went to New York to launch a TV show. You chose to come out to LA to launch a TV show. What led to that decision? What made you come here? You know, I I did a t I did a television entertainment show in Chicago back in like 2007 through 2010 ish. You know, 11 ish. It kind of wrapped it up, um, and then maybe around 2012, I kind of decided. I went from red carpet to, I think I want to be a talk show host. It was just like an idea. Like, I want to do something different. You know, I had spent years doing like red carpet events mm -hmm. in Chicago to some of like the most industry's best events, a lot of celebrity events and things like that. But um, I liked, 
I like being able to set the standard in terms of time, because mm -hmm. I feel like when you do red carpet, you're on that time. You're mm -hmm. bombarded. You're on a crowded red carpet, and you're kind of getting pushed around. And if you're like low man on the totem pole, you might not even get an interview that day, or you or you get the interview, and they're like, okay, two minutes, and that's it. You know, and you do all this hustle and bustle. And the defining moment for me was that I wanted to create a talk show so I could set the time. And I could pick the guests and I could run the show and nobody would get to dictate to me like you don't get the interview today. You know how many times I've gone and parked and gotten dressed and gone down for red carpet events to leave empty handed with no interview, you know? Wow. Oh, they're not doing an interview, only doing three interviews and they're gone. Oh, they're late, so they're not gonna do any interviews today. So by the time I hit like 2013, when deciding to move to LA, it was December. So really the only factor was the cold, I'll be honest. And the <laughs> second factor was that I had a cousin in San Diego, okay. my favorite cousin in the world, and she and her family live in San Diego. So it was like, I can make it in LA, I have a little bit of family two hours away in San Diego, and it's warmer there, I'm already from Chicago. But so those really were my two factors. Okay, okay, all right. Nothing wrong with that as well. Um, so as a woman of color, um, you know, you talk about having your show and producing and what have you. Um, what are some of the highs and lows that you have experienced in producing your own show? I would say, you know, I kind of beat to my own drum. I, I really feel like I moved out here and I've just always wanted to do things my way, you know? I never really felt like, I feel like I create opportunities for myself. Um, and I feel like a lot of people in LA, not all people, but I, I always say this, I always say there are more people looking for opportunities than there are people that are creating them. Mm -hmm. And so since 06 or 07, I have really just taken my ideas and I just ran with them. I never really felt like, I never really applied to a lot of on air jobs, I'll be honest, because I wanted to do things my way. If there's a long line of people waiting to get an on air job, I'll put myself on there. You see what I'm saying? Mm, okay. <laughs> I'll create my own show and put my own guests on there and I'll produce it myself. You know, it's it's not that hard to do, you know. So yeah, I I didn't I don't feel like I, I there was really I would say probably finance is, is the biggest hurdle that I've probably ever had to get over. Because mm -hmm. um, I've always kind of done my own thing. So the money part, you know, because LA is an expensive city, so yes, you gotta is. get here, you gotta live. You can't really, you don't really want to produce a film or a movie or a show, but you, you might not have paid, you know, your car note, you know. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So I've always been solar focused and moving here on being able to settle, pay my bills, and then I felt like the rest would unfold. Mm -hmm. and it did. Okay. All right. So, in your opinion, um, you know, moving from Chicago to LA, mm -hmm. what are what are some of the biggest misconceptions um, that people have about LA as far as like the media goes, the TV, and the film? And and pretty much as I said, in your opinion, what are some of those biggest misconceptions that people have about there? I people think like LA is this. I think people think LA is as glamorous as it is on television, for one. Mm -hmm. And I think people have the myth, and I, myself included, because I can remember years before moving here, watching the award shows. Like, back when I was really into award shows, I would think like, oh, I would love to work at that award show. I would love to be at the Indies on the red carpet. I would love to be at the Oscars on the red carpet. When I get to LA, I'm going to go do those red carpets. Then I get to LA, and I feel like what's called media credentials, mm -hmm. usually the Emmys, the Oscars, all those, all those big award shows, um, they have a press page months in advance where you fill out this form on their website, put in your name, your media outlet, the address, the phone number, how many badges you need, et cetera. And then if you're in a, basically like a lottery, they, they may get thousands of requests. They may have a red carpet that fits 50 people. So if you're getting a thousand requests from all over the world to come be on the red carpet and they have to pick the top 50 people that they have room on this giant red carpet for, you think, you know, they're going to pick the E! Entertainment News, they're going to pick KTLA, they're going to pick the top ones, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, what that let me know is I need to just work on my content. 
after. So I spent that first year thinking like, all I had to do was get to LA. I have a show. All I have to do is just fill out the credentials and I'm gonna get there. I think the closest I came was the Oscars. Um, not the Oscar show, okay. <laughs> but the pre, the day before the Oscars, they were letting media come out. I don't know what you're gonna film the day before, but they're literally setting the red carpet up and all of this. I was so excited, like my show is gonna be at the Oscars. I did technically get credentials, but it was not for the day of the Oscars, it was the day before, where the crew, the carpenters, other media outlets, so guess what I'm doing? I'm on the red carpet interviewing other media outlets. I'm on that, I'm, I'm all, I got my Oscars badge. I see the glitz and the glam, but yeah, the myth would be that if opportunities don't come as easily and quickly, really no matter how ready you think you are, it's a lot of people waiting in line for those same opportunities. Okay. Well, that leads me to my next question. Um, what advice would you give someone following in your footsteps? Like, if they're going to make the move to come out here to LA, what's the advice that you, Shandria Brown, would give that person? Anybody that's coming out here, my advice would be to um, have tough, have thick skin. Mm -hmm. um, get your money together. Get that money right. I mean, I didn't come here with a whole lot of money, but I did have great support from my, my parents were very supportive. Um, so that, it, but if you don't have that type of support or you don't have a lot of money, say, I mean, because we, 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 we've heard the success stories of celebrities that like Taraji P. Henson, so she came out here with $700, you know, back in the day with her son. So not that it's impossible, but my advice would be is to have a, have a financial plan. Because we have a plan for the art. Like, you're an actor. You know, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to go to auditions. I'm going to network. You have that plan. So, mm -hmm. then if you're a musician, I'm going to go. I'm just going to play as many gigs as I can. I'm going to do as many. I'm a comic. I'm going to do as many open mics as I can. And we, we love our craft so much as artists. Whatever your artistry is, you love that thing. Like, you can do it in your sleep. You don't have to get paid for it. You just love it. You just love, 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 love it. But the one aspect that myself and a lot of other people that I've gotten to know in LA, we forget about the financial aspect, you know? Not just, I gotta get a job lined up, or I gotta get, you forget the planning part, you know? Mm. Where are you gonna live? <laughs> where, where, key. how are you gonna eat? <laughs> Very key. You know, like, you go to IHOP, an omelet in Chicago at IHOP is $8.99. An omelet in LA is $11.99. For that same omelet on that same menu, it's a three dollar difference. You know what I'm saying? Because LA is so much more expensive. The taxes are higher. Businesses have to pay more for to have that business here. So then they, the prices are higher. Not just businesses like well, we just want to make more money. They're being charged more money, so they have to charge. They have to make the money up from somewhere. So it's like something as simple as that. Your groceries. Go to the meat department. <laughs> Fish is like $8.99 a pound, you know? But if you go to Chicago or Atlanta or something like that, fish, that same fish is $5.99 a pound. You see what I'm saying? So those are just two small gas, two, three dollars <laughs> more. Yeah. Why is gas $2.50 in Jacksonville, Florida, but $4.50 in LA? You see what I'm saying? So why you think that you have enough money to be good, you get to spend the money just to live? Yes, that would be my advice for anybody. Keep your craft, keep your passions alive, but that financial planning. Even if you know, you know, you know your mom and dad never talked to you about money, do that, do that for yourself. All right, well, I mean, you, uh, I'm just gonna tell you, my wife always drops some nuggets and she's dropping nuggets for y'all today. Um, but I've come to my last question, babe, and my question would be, what word would you say best describe you and why? I'm a visionary. That's my word, visionary. Visionary? Mm -hmm. Why would you pick that word? I feel like I've, I've been blessed with a gift to see bigger pictures. Mm -hmm. um, any art form that I've created since 2006, I saw the vision and then I have always been very diligent about making it come to fruition. So from maybe that small talk show I had in Chicago where it was an idea in the kitchen to the right people coming into your world to make it pop, to interviewing 
Queen Latifah and Dwayne Wade and you know all these amazing people to even my talk show where it's an idea that I I'm gonna start a talk show. I never had I never started a talk show. Columbia doesn't teach you how to start a talk show, you know. Um, but then to have a show that's broadcasting on six in sixty cities, like how do you go from A to B? But I saw that I I knew I wanted my show on television, so I, that is why I feel like I'm a visionary because I have a really awesome gift that I don't take for granted to to see ahead, to see the bigger picture. And not only do the projects that I create benefit me, they also help other people. I'm, I've created a platform for other people to have exposure. You know, I've created um, income opportunities for people. I've created experience for other people. So, you know, a vision, a true, as a true visionary, I'm selfless. I don't just think about, oh, I'm gonna get myself on TV. I'm thinking about all the other people that this, I'm a visionary. Well, Ms. Chandra Brownlow, I could think of a word, and my word would be fantastic. But it's not about me, it's about you. But I would definitely like to thank you for being a guest on my show today. Absolutely, thank you. And, um, man, why don't you tell the people out there if they need to contact you, or if anybody wants to get in contact with you, or any business opportunities, or what have you, how can you reach out? Oh man, stay in tune with me. Um, visit my show at www.shundriashow.com. C H U N D R I A. That is my website. Um, I'm gearing up. Um, the show currently broadcasts in 60 US cities, but uh, very soon I'm going to cross a milestone and I'm going to be airing in 100 US cities. 100. Which is fantastic for an independently produced TV talk show. So, December 7th, um, I'm celebrating my 38th birthday that year, you know, that week. My birthday's on the 11th, but on December 7th, I would like to just invite everyone out to celebrate with me um, 100 U.S. cities for the Shondria show. So it's going to be lots of fun. My amazing husband, the host of Fort with Tyler and Love, is going to host the event for me. So it's going to be super, super fun. So check it out. But you can always start with ShondriaShow.com. It has all my episodes. It has info about me. I'm on social media at Shondria TV. C-H-U-N-D-R-I-A TV. That's where to stay in contact with me. So much in store for 2020. So if you're on the web, connect with me and keep living your dreams. Like whatever that, whatever your dreams are, no matter who's watching this, just just live your dreams in big, bright, beautiful color. It will work out. All right, y'all. And remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. This is Word with Ty Brown Love. We out. We out. <laughs>